from home. If you ever find yourself doing crazy things for no good reason, I do. Have a look at this. Whenever I need to put coloured pencils or pens back into their packet, I find myself doing this, sorting them out in a very special way. Can you guess what I'm doing? I'd put that one next, then this one, then I'd pick up that one and pop it in, then that one, and then this one. How am I arranging the colours? You guessed it. The colours of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and so on. Have you ever had a look at a rainbow and tried to work out how many colours are there? Have a look at this. Some people would say there are seven colours, others would say there are six. In fact, if you look very closely at a rainbow or a spectrum that's been formed by splitting up white light with a glass prism, you'll find that the colours all merge into one another and so there may be dozens or even hundreds of colours that you can identify as separate colours. You know, colours do vary in many different ways. Have a look at these. These are made by putting some food colouring in water, red, yellow, blue. Those are quite distinctly different colours. We say they have different hues one from the other. Each one is a different hue. And that's one very important word to remember about colours. But also, colours can vary in other ways as well. Have a look at this blue glass here, or glass of blue water and food colouring. It has a grey card behind it, but if I put a white card behind it, what happens to the blue? It's still the same blue, but it's become lighter. And so lightness is another important, important feature about colours. They also differ in another way as well. Colours can differ from one another depending on how much of the pigment they have in them. I'll add some food colouring to this glass, add a few more drops and stir it up, and the blue becomes more saturated, a deeper blue. So it's changed once again. We say chroma is another important difference between colours. So remembering those things, there are in fact millions of different colours. Have a look at this block of colours. It indicates to you just some of the many hundreds, thousands, even millions of colours that can be formed. Well, bearing that in mind, have you ever wondered what would happen if you take colours and mix them together? I guess you may have tried it. Have a look at this. If we take some yellow, we put it in a, another glass there, mix some red to it. Can you guess what's going to happen? You make up your mind, call out the colour, and we'll see if you're correct. Yes, it went orange. What if we take yellow in this glass here and add a little blue to it? What will happen? You guessed it, we have green. And what if we take some red and we add to that some blue? What colour will we get? Yes, we get a purpley colour. So there, we've created part of a rainbow by mixing colours. And you can do it not only with food colouring, but also with felt pens. Have a look at this. I've drawn a wheel here and divided it into six sections. And I've started by colouring one half of the wheel a pinky red colour. Now I'll take my yellow pen and I'll colour another half of the wheel. This colour, this side here, I'll make yellow. Can you see what's happening? Wherever the yellow crosses the pinky red colour, we get orange. And now if I take the blue and colour this half down here, what's going to happen? You make up your mind, make your prediction and see if you're correct. Yes, wherever the blue crosses over the yellow, we get green. Where blue is against white paper, it still looks blue, of course. And where blue crosses the pinky red colour, we get purple. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. The colours of the rainbow. Now, here's a challenge for you. This week, I would like you to take three colours. They may be felt pens, if you like, or they could be pastels. But use just the three primary colours, red, blue, yellow. You may even like to try watercolours in tubes with a brush and water. And then start a very simple picture. Here I've drawn a picture of a, an old farmhouse and some trees and hills with crazy colours. Remember, I'm going to try and create all the colours I want with just those three pens. Why would we want a blue tree? Well, you can guess what I'm going to do to it, can't you? I'm going to go over the blue leaves with yellow to create green leaves wherever I want them. There we are. And with a bit of time and a few minutes I'll have a green tree. What about the blue trunk? Well first I'll go over it with yellow and then by adding the pinky red colour, all three colours together, we get a sort of brownie colour. We have pink hills but we can easily change them to purple by adding blue. Hills often look purple in the distance, don't they? And the old farmhouse we can change from yellow to an orangey colour by adding just a few strokes of pinky red to it. So by using those three primary colours, we can create a multicoloured picture. 
and I want you to try the same thing this week and see what you come up with. I want to know.